Hello guys, I'm Sudarshan Koirala and welcome back to Data Science Basics. This is the video number 24 in Databricks series and I'm going to explain you about the Unity catalog in this video. This is the huge topic by itself, but I will try to explain you on the high level or let's say on a helicopter view what it is and then also show you in the UI what you can do. Just clicking here and there. At the end, I will also show you how you can create the catalogs in the notebook of Databricks. It's not necessary, but you need to be admin for that. First thing first, what is Unity Catalog? This is the official document that it says Unified Governance for Data and AI. It might be quite challenging to understand many things if you are completely new to Unity Catalog because as you can see here, it says Databricks Unity Catalog is the industry's first unified governance solution for data and AI on the lake house. So with Unity Catalog, organizations can seamlessly govern their structured and unstructured data, machine learning models, notebooks, dashboard and files on any cloud or platform. So it seems that it's going to cover most of the things. And it is difficult to understand many things. But instead of this huge document, as you can see here, there are many things you can go and you can see all the things. I'll put the link in the description. But there is another document from Databricks which says Unity Catalog Best Practices. I think this is where you can understand more better than the first one. I will just go through the headlines so you will get the idea. So data governments and data isolation building blocks. So from here also we know that it can be used for the data isolation and data governance. And this is how it works on the higher level. There is a meta store and there is a catalog and there is the schema or the database and there is table, view, volume, function, models and there are many things explained here but I think you need to be focused on only one thing and in this video if you just focus on this meta store, catalog, schema and then I will show you how to create a table. If you understand that then you will somehow know how Unity Catalog works. And if you scroll a little bit down, you can read this in your free time. But it says here, plan your data isolation model. So you can plan according to this. And here it says, users can only gain access to data based on specified access rules. You can see where this is going now. And the next one is data can be managed only by designated people or teams. Again, you see how granular it is going here. And this, there are the figures for you to know better and data is physically separated in storage so it shows you how it is separated and data can be assessed only in designated environments so before there was designated peoples and groups now there is designated environment also so in in a in a high level just by this what you can see is let's say that we have a data and you have many people in the organization and let's say that you have different environments there, there is a finance group there is a BI group, let's say that is uh, sales and marketing groups. You want to give access to certain data only to certain groups of people and only to certain uh, environments only. And also in the tabular level also you can give the access so that let's say that you have 10 tables and you want to give permission to one group of people, only one tables, you can do that. You can also give in or column level permissions, but let's not go through that. In this video and okay this is enough of the talks now you can go through this um, documentation but now let's jump to the database ui and i will show you how you can do that by the way this is the free trial of the database ai and unity catalog cannot be used in the community edition of databricks you need to be careful about that so yeah there is the catalog i can go inside the catalog now meaning that this is the catalog explorer in databricks ui when I created the uh, free trial, some of the things are already being created. Not some, but all of the things which I'm showing you here are already being created by the Databricks, the commands that it runs behind the scene itself. There is this main. What is main? Main is also a Unity catalog that is already being created for me. You can already see that, okay, this main is the catalog. Default is the schema. If I click the default, it says here, okay, catalog main, main dot default. And there is a table if I create and it will be dot table. So that is how it works. You need to be careful in three things here. When you read the data, there will be catalog, 
that will be the schema or the database and then the table. This is how it is shown here. And let's just go with the main. So there is nothing here shown. Okay, this is the catalog as it says here itself. And you can create a schema here and you can tag whatever you want to do. There is the schema, as I said you, default and information schema. There is details about this. So it says here meta store ID and all the different things. There is the permission, as I said you, you can provide the permission or grant the permission on the catalog level. Here, this is account users. So they have the use catalog privilege for the main. So if I go here and click grant, as you can see here, I can type to add multiple principles. So here I can type something. And this is the privilege request, the data reader or data editor. And from here, you can give the privilege. Okay, if you want to give use catalog, or create a schema. They say that you don't want someone to create the schema, but just use the schema. You can just say use a schema or maybe use catalog. So you can, they can use the catalog. As you can see here, there are many different things. There was volume functions in the previous diagram, if you remember. You can specify from it or you can grant all the privileges and you can see all the things are automatically clicked. This is how you can grant the permission on the main. And there is the orchid space. So it's, it will show here all orchid space have access. If you just uncheck that and it will ask something, okay, give the certain orchid space that you want to provide the access. Once you have the catalog and I was in the main and there is this default, as I said you before, I will provide this to all so that it will show us all. So I go to scheme default. As you can see here, it goes to catalogs and main and the default. From here also, you can create a table, volumes, models, functions, details is shown here. As you can see here, the full name is main.default and the permissions, again, you can go here and now there are different things. And then now the grant is on main.default before it was on main. As you can see, here, you can provide the permissions here. But now what I will do is create table because now we don't have any data here but we need to have the data. So what I will do is there is this add icon here. I will go to this add icon and I will say add data. There are many sources you can have the data from as you can see here. I will just upload the data from my computer. So let's go with the movie statistics. I will open this. So now this is as you can see here once I upload it will first need to find the specific catalogs and the schema. So here as you can see DS basics, it went to DS basics, but I was showing you about the main. If I go here and I can choose on the main also, but this DS basics is by default created. Let me actually show you again so it's easier. Whatever I explained you before with the main is same as DS basics also, because DS basics is a name I provided when I create this free trial. Whatever I explain main, it's there. But DS basics is the one being created for me, but exactly is the replicate of this, let's say in that way. And whatever I explained you before here is exactly the same thing as I'm showing you before. So I, I, I can upload it inside DS basics as it is mentioned, as it is mentioned here, or I can just go here and change to main. As you can see, nothing happens. The data is there. It went to the main and it went to the default. You need to choose which catalog you want to use and which schema. If you have different schema, you can create the schema as I said you before and put in the different schema. But let's just go with the main as I showed you with the main. This is the main and this is the default schema and there is the name. I can provide different names here, but it's fine movie statistics data set. It says create a table. This is the name of the table that is going to be created. But you need to be careful in order to visualize this. There should be a there should be a cluster running, but it's a little bit different than the cluster that we were used to before because we need to go to this SQL warehouses. And if I click this, there should be a new catalog being created in order to achieve what we just achieved. I created this already before. I will show you how to create this and I will explain all the different things mentioned here about SQL in the next video. But you need to be careful one thing that we need to create a new cluster in SQL warehouses in order to read these particular things here. From here, you can choose 
which one you want to go. But you need to be again careful also here. Because as you can see here, there is Sudarshan Kweranal's cluster. I can even use this. But as, as I'm working on the SQL things, if I go to this SQL editor, it will ask me for the warehouses. I created a warehouses earlier so that it's easier for me to go through and explain you things. But just to upload the data, you can just go with the clusters also. If, you, if I choose the cluster, it's now going to start the cluster as I said you before and it will upload the data. But why I showed you before with the SQL warehouse is because after we upload the data, my, my aim was to explain you the SQL things tomorrow. So I'm just showing you how you can do that. But it's now starting the cluster. I don't want to start the cluster. So how do you close if something is being started? You can go to the compute. As you can see, it is starting here. I will just go here and terminate. Hey, don't start. I don't want to pay something here now. Okay, now it is terminated. But you get the idea. You can use both of these. But the good idea when using the SQL things is with the SQL warehouses. Now I have the SQL YouTube test. I am just using that YouTube test. So it took the default one because that was already started. And now this is the table. So I can say create table. So it is going to create the table here for me. And once the table is created, we can provide the permissions in the table also. So that's the good way of uh, Unity catalog. Let's wait when your table movie statistics data set is being created. So it is showing us that, okay, it is going to be created here. And yeah, let's wait when this is created. But when this is being created, let me go to the Unity catalog part here. So what it will be doing here now is inside the main, there is this default. Inside the default, there is movie statistics data set. Okay, it seems that it is already created. Okay, the Unity catalog explorer lets you explore many things. It is showing here all the different things and okay because i just use this for the first time it is explaining me different things so yeah now you can see that we have catalogs main default so that is how you also use this to read the data also now so there is main dot default dot movie statistics data set and this is the delta by default data source format is delta as i sure mentioned you one time that whatever you create it is going to be in delta in databricks and now the size is shown here and the columns is also shown here. If you go here, sample data, the data will be also shown here. But if you go here now, details, it is showing all the details where the data is being stored and things and the permission. So this is again the good part here. If you go and say grant, now you can see that is grant on main dot default dot movie statistics data set, meaning that now this is on the tabular level. Let's say that you want to provide something here. Apply the tag, modify, select all previous. Let's say that you, you want your colleague just to select the data, give read access to an object. They can just select the data, but they cannot modify it or they cannot do any other things than just to select the data. That's the label that you can give the permissions. And there is the history. It will show us the history. And the lineage is also a good part here, meaning that let's say that you have a data, you did some transformation and you went, uh, so one level of the table is converted to the next level. You can see what is the lineage of that particular table also. We haven't done here anything, but if you see this lineage graph, it will just show us that, okay, this is the data that we have. But if we do some transformations, then it will show us the lineage, okay, what happened before and what happened after that. This is also the good idea to track the data. And there is the insights. Okay, I haven't used anything, so it is not shown here. So yeah, this is how you can create. And here, if you can see here, it says create query and notebook and quick dashboard. You can already create a quick dashboard from here or notebook. You can go to the notebook part or the query. I explained you before that I will be showing you how to do something related to notebook. If I click this notebook, let's see what happens. You can see that it opens in a new notebook. And this is how you can read the data. So you need to provide SQL. I hope you know now. And select all from. And this is the main, as I said, you dot default dot this. This is how you can read the data. But for this, again, you need to have a cluster. You can use YouTube test cluster here. And what I can do is just go here and shift enter. You can see the data here. 
I hope now it is clear for you. But if you want to create the catalog, let's say, I have one notebook open here somewhere. Okay, here is the notebook. I want to show you that you can create a cluster from the notebook itself using the spark.sql. First, I need to go and attach the cluster. So it says here, attach to compute resource. SQL warehouses only support SQL and markdown shells. Sales of other languages types will be skipped during the execution. I can say confirm. And because this is the SQL, so now it is maybe a little bit confusing for you because I created a cluster before because I, I want to show you the SQL things and I use that to upload the data. And now I need to create new kind of cluster in order to work in the notebook. But it says here, okay, this is just the SQL things. And now we are on the Python. But what we need to do here now is it, it is just allowing us to run the SQL kind of things. So let's say that what happens if I run this? So it says sale is skipped during execution. SQL warehouses only support executing the SQL sales. If you had the cluster which is not the SQL warehouses, then you could have run this by providing percentage SQL. It's fine. But then you can use this also. But now it's a little bit confusing because although we have this Python, our cluster is here. We are not able to run the Python things because our cluster is the SQL warehouses. So create catalog if not exist. But without this, let's try here. So I will say here percentage SQL. And now if I say create catalog if not exist, catalog. Let's see what happens. Okay, it runs. And now if I go to the UI, there should be a quick start catalog. Now I will go to the catalog page. I will refresh the page here. And now you can see there is a new catalog being created called quick start catalog. It might be a little bit confusing because there were two different clusters here and there, but you get the idea which cluster to use in what kind of scenarios. But now if you want to, this is also the good idea how to quickly convert things from, from the SQL Spark to the SQL. I can just go here and run SQL use catalog. I want it to use the catalog. So yeah, it is going to use this particular catalog. And let's say that I want to display all the catalogs. This is actually a good thing for you also to learn. I didn't notice that. So I will go here and then I will just say SQL. And then I will say show catalogs. It will show me all the catalogs that I have, the basics and all the different things. Okay, so that's that's all for the video. I hope now you get the idea on higher level. What is Unity Catalog? And what are the things that you can do with the Unity Catalog? And also a little bit, what is the difference between the SQL warehouses cluster uh, or the compute and the compute that we create normally before? I hope that is clear now at some level. If not, you can rewatch this video and you will be clear. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.